In this video, I'm going to be describing the Spencer Attucks cavity theory, which is just a modification of the Bragg Gray cavity theory that makes it slightly more accurate. Let's first make a distinction between energy released and energy absorbed. If a 2 MeV photon enters this little square of water, undergoes a Compton interaction, and leaves at 1 MeV, we say that it's lost or released 1 MeV in this mass of water. The Kerma, or kinetic energy released per unit mass, is 1 MeV. In a Compton interaction, this energy is given to an electron. Let's say that this 1 MeV electron travels this far and deposits its energy continuously along its path. We see that it deposits some of its energy inside this mass of water, before it exits and deposits some of its energy outside of this mass as well. Here it deposits half of its energy inside this mass, and half outside. Remember, the dose is the amount of energy absorbed by this mass. So the amount of energy lost by this electron inside this mass in the process of causing damage by ionization. Here, the dose is equal to the amount of energy that this electron deposits inside the mass, so 0.5 MeV. The dose to this volume is lower than the kerma in this volume. The amount of energy released is greater than the amount of energy absorbed, because the electron leaves the volume and deposits some of its energy outside. Kerma is only applicable to secondary ionizing radiations like photons, but there's a similar quantity that applies to electrons. If an electron enters this mass of water with 2 MeV and leaves at 1 MeV, we know that the energy lost inside this volume is 1 MeV, which we call the SEMA, or converted energy per unit mass. SEMA is for electrons what Kerma is for photons. It's the amount of energy lost or released in a mass of material, which doesn't necessarily equal the amount of energy deposited. If this electron undergoes a hard collision, it can give a significant amount of energy to another electron, which may be enough to escape the volume. This one here has enough energy to escape and carry 0.25 MeV outside of the volume. This means that while the amount of energy released inside this volume may be 1 MeV, the amount of energy absorbed is only 0.75 MeV, since that 0.25 MeV escapes and is deposited outside of the volume. So in this case, the amount of energy released also does not equal the amount of energy absorbed. So if electrons are escaping from a volume, for example an ionization chamber active volume, this means that when it's applicable, the kerma is not equal to the dose, at least not directly, and the sema is not equal to the dose either. This is relevant to the bragg gray theory, because it makes use of collision stopping power ratios to convert doses measured in one medium to doses in another. And a collision stopping power is the amount of energy lost per centimeter in a medium, not the amount of energy absorbed. So in a volume one centimeter thick, with a stopping power of 1 MeV per centimeter. The stopping power tells us that a 2 MeV electron will lose 1 MeV inside the volume. So the SEMA will be 1 MeV. But if there are hard collisions occurring inside this volume, and some of this energy escapes, the stopping power tells us that the energy lost will be 1 MeV, which is still true, but the energy absorbed, or dose, will be lower. A collision stopping power ratio, like the water to air ratio that we use to convert ionization chamber measurements to dose to water, is a ratio of the SEMA in the two media, the amount of energy released. It's not the ratio of doses. So the collision stopping power ratio isn't a rigorously accurate conversion of dose measured in one medium to dose in another. Let's have a look at how this might affect calculations using the bragg gray relation. If we draw up a measurement geometry similar to the one that I use in the video on bragg gray theory, a one centimeter thick air volume with a collision stopping power of 0.5 mEV per centimeter, surrounded by water which has a stopping power of 1 MeV per centimeter. The collision stopping power tells us that an electron passing 1 centimeter through air, which has a collision stopping power of 0.5 MeV per centimeter, would lose 0.5 MeV. And remember that the whole point of having this air volume is that we can measure the amount of energy absorbed inside it. So in an ideal world, we'd measure 0.5 MeV absorbed inside the chamber. We can find the amount of energy absorbed by this point in water by using the bragg gray relation from the previous video. Energy absorbed in water equals the measured energy absorbed in air multiplied by the ratio of collision stopping powers in water and air. And remember, this is the ratio of energy released per centimeter in the two media. This gives us a result of 1 MeV, which is what we would expect to see in this situation. But if there are hard collisions occurring inside our air volume, some of the energy may be carried out of the volume by knock-on electrons. In this case, let's say that we lose 0.1 MeV. So we wouldn't actually measure 0.5 MeV, which is the amount of energy lost by these electrons, or the SEMA. We'd instead measure 0.4 MeV, which is the amount of energy released in our chamber volume, minus the energy that escapes. So the energy absorbed is 0.4 MeV. The amount of energy absorbed being different from the amount of energy released in the chamber wouldn't really affect the accuracy of the bragg gray relation if the ratio of collision stopping powers in the two media was also equal to the ratio of energy absorbed in the two media. 
In this case, the collision stopping power in water is double that in air. If the amount of energy absorbed in water per centimeter is double that absorbed in air per centimeter, applying this relation would still give the correct result. But if the difference between energy absorbed and energy released in the two media is different, say if in water 0.9 MeV was absorbed per centimeter, so if only 10% of the energy escaped, but if in air 0.4 MeV was absorbed per centimeter, so 20% of it escapes, applying a straight up Bragg Gray relation using collision stopping powers would give us an incorrect result. Let's first look at what happens if we do the right thing by using the ratio of energy absorbed per centimeter in the two media. This is slightly different to the normal Bragg Gray approach, which uses collision stopping powers and the ratio of energy released. This gives us a result of 0.9 MeV, which is the theoretically correct result. If we use the collision stopping power in this case instead, as we do when applying Bragg Gray theory, we get a slightly lower result, which is incorrect. So, using the ratio of energy absorbed in the two media, which is a slightly more accurate approach, is the basis of Spencer at its cavity theory. So, Bragg Gray theory uses a collision stopping power ratio to convert dose measured in one medium to another, which is essentially the ratio of energy released per centimeter in the two media, or SEMA. And Spencer at its cavity theory is essentially the same in every single way, except instead of a collision stopping power ratio, we aim to use the ratio of energy absorbed in the two media instead, which is slightly more accurate. To apply the Spencer Addicts theory, we need to know the amount of energy absorbed per centimeter in a material, not the stopping power, which is the amount of energy lost. Stopping powers have been used in the past because they're relatively easy to calculate if we know the energy of electrons crossing an ion chamber. The main reason that using collision stopping powers gives inaccurate conversions of dose from one medium to another is that rate of energy absorption doesn't equal the rate of energy loss because secondary or knock-on electrons can escape the chamber and carry energy away. Electrons with more energy are more likely to escape the chamber volume, and those with lower energy are less likely. So secondary electrons released in low energy collisions, in which only a small amount of energy is transferred, are fairly likely to stay inside the chamber. So the amount of energy lost by electrons in only very low energy collisions is a lot closer to the energy that's actually absorbed inside the chamber. So Spencer Addicts theory uses something called a restricted stopping power, which is often denoted by the letter L, to approximate the amount of energy absorbed from electrons per centimeter. It's the amount of energy loss per centimeter only in low energy collisions. The whole point of a restricted stopping power is to only account for collisions involving energy transfers low enough that they produce electrons that are likely to stay inside the chamber volume. We see here that knock-on electron range increases with the amount of energy involved in the collision, and therefore so does the likelihood that the electron will escape the chamber. Energy has a pretty close relationship with distance travel. It's found that with an energy of 10 kilo electron volts, I neglected to put the K in here, Electrons travel a distance that's roughly equivalent to the size of the chamber volume, in the order of a few millimetres. In fact, 10 electron volts is the average energy required to cross a generic cylindrical chamber like this, bearing in mind that electrons travel a shorter path through the chamber near the edges and a longer path near the centre due to the cylindrical geometry. This is often chosen as a cutoff, which we call delta, when applying restricted stopping powers. So delta equals the average energy required to cross an ion chamber. This cutoff allows us to calculate the amount of energy that's likely to stay inside the chamber volume, so it might have made more sense to use the average energy required to escape from the chamber volume rather than the amount of energy required to cross it. This was acknowledged by Addicts in his textbook, but he found later on that small differences in the value of delta don't have very much of an impact on the final result, so it was left as is. So when calculating restricted stopping powers, we say that we want to include collisions that produce electrons with this energy or less. So anything in purple here, with a relatively short range that's likely to stay in or around the chamber, and ignore anything that produces knock-on electrons with a longer range, as shown in green here. This might look a little bit strange, since some of these purple low-energy electrons actually escape the chamber, so we'd be accounting for more energy than is actually deposited in the chamber. But this would be offset somewhat by the fact that we ignore the green electrons completely, even though they would deposit some energy in the chamber. So the restricted stopping power is the energy loss per centimeter by electrons in collisions that involve an energy transfer of less than this cutoff value. This is approximately equal to the energy absorbed per centimeter. So now we can say a little bit more about how the Spencer Addicts relation works. We've said already that the energy deposited in water is equal to the energy deposited in air multiplied by the ratio of energy loss per centimeter due to collisions that transfer less energy than the cutoff in water and air. In reality, you're always going to have a whole lot of different electron energies crossing an ion chamber. So there's going to be a spectrum. If we draw it here, number of electrons versus energy, it has a maximum energy and the cutoff, which is quite low, at 10 keV. So the actual energy loss in collisions with a transfer less than the cutoff is equal to all of the energy in this part of the spectrum beneath the cutoff value 
since remember this cutoff is equal to the average energy required to cross the chamber, so we can assume that any electron with an energy at or below this value will be unable to cross the chamber and all of its energy will be absorbed inside. The electrons with a higher energy will also transfer some energy, but some of it will be in collisions transferring more than the cutoff and some of it will be in collisions transferring less. We only want the component that comes from collisions that are less than this value. So what we do is at each energy we say the number of electrons at this energy times the restricted stopping power at this energy is equal to the amount of energy that these electrons are depositing. And the stopping power does vary with electron energy. So we need to do this for each individual energy above the cutoff value. So this equation becomes the amount of energy deposited in the chamber due to collisions involving less energy transfer than this cutoff value is equal to all the energy possessed by electrons that are less than this cutoff plus an integral between the cutoff value and the maximum energy of the number of electrons at each energy multiplied by the restricted stopping power at each energy. We can call this the Spencer Attic stopping power, which is approximately equal to the amount of energy absorbed. And Spencer Attic's cavity theory is pretty much exactly the same as Bragg Gray cavity theory, except we replace the collision stopping power ratio with the Spencer Attic stopping power ratio, which is essentially the restricted stopping power plus the energy of any electrons below the cutoff value.